Welcome back everybody, Ed here, and I hope you enjoyed uh, playing around with Flock, and I hope you've done those tutorials on that front page. If you haven't had a chance to do it yet, you really should, because they really do show you uh, some of the very, very cool ways that Flock can be used. Now, Flock, like a lot of computer programs, I suppose, we rarely use more than 10% of any program's power that we use on the uh, on anything, whether it be word processing or, or browsing or whatever it happens to be. So in this video, I want to show you a couple of things that you can do to set up Flock to make it really, really work hard for you and to get really insane leverage. Because I want to be able to do things that uh, mean that I can just do one little click here or one little click there and that has great leverage repercussions in terms of communication. And once you get a feel for this inside of your niche, you'll start to see how you can really become the center of that particular niche. And it just makes your web surfing experience, forget marketing for a second, just makes your web experience a heck of a lot better. Now, the first thing you might notice, here's my uh, Flock browser up here, and you can see we're here on the dashboard um, in for the 30-day challenge. And the first thing I want you to have a look at here is you'll notice that some of my extensions have actually already automatically come across from my Firefox installation. You can see the stumble upon toolbar is here. Uh, if we go down below, you can see down here, the SEO uh, toolbar is there. Um, the page rank, Alexa information, uh, even my Twitter bar information is there uh, as well, which is very, very cool. So you might find, if you've been using Firefox, that a lot of your extensions are already through it. We're going to save extensions for another video, though, because I want to take you through exactly which extensions we're going to be using this year on the 30 Day Challenge and show you some really cool new ones. Um, but we'll save that for the next video. Right. The biggest place that you can go, I think, in any program where you want to customize it for your own use, and there are a few in, in here in Flock, but the first place that we want to go is we want to go up here and have, let's have a look at our preferences and just go through those for a second. Okay. So we can see here, uh, the first thing that you've got uh, is your startup options. You can see here when Flock starts, show my homepage and getting started tab show my home page, uh, show a blank page, show my windows and tabs from last time. That can be a really, really good option. If you set up a series of tabs, you know, with the, say, the 30 day challenge forum in one, the training in another, um, your news reader, Google reader, which we'll be using this year, surprise, um, and set all those up. It saves you a lot of time when you're restarting the browser just to be able to go boom and back back where you want to go. There's also, um, in terms of the homepage, you can have a homepage set up as well. I'm going to choose, and it just goes to show that I uh, don't set everything up absolutely beautifully either, is I'm going to show my windows and tabs from last time because that's very handy. Uh, you can see there's a homepage here which is about my, uh, which currently is about my world. Now this is a very nice page which uh, Flock puts together for you with different media, various friends activity you can see there, and various feeds, which is really cool. I don't use this, and look, the only reason I don't use it is because I think there are better tools to, to do different things. Uh, you may want to set this up and have a play around with it, but I'll show you how I do things. Okay, so let's get back to our preferences. We'll just go up here and choose preferences. Now, sh downloads, show the downloads windows when downloading a file. I think that's a really important thing to do um, because often when you're downloading something, you can get lost. And, and again, here for me, in the Macintosh, there's a specific uh, downloads folder which I would like them to use. So I'm going to choose that a bit uh, a bit later and, and make that change as well. So you can choose your folder or indeed ask it where to save files. Um, see, because on the Macintosh, if I have it go to the download folder, I can have these cool uh, different ways of looking at information and I can quickly scroll through and grab through and have a look at it. And of course, it all previews each of the bits of content. Uh, on the PC, it'll it'll just go to the folder. But anyway, so there you have it. So you can click down there, which is nice. Uh, you can, you know, 
can open up in fan view and have the most recent views as uh, as well, which is quite nice. Uh, I think the grid view is probably the most useful, but I digress. Okay, always check to see if the flock is the default browser on startup. I do have that checked because, I, funnily enough, the other browsers get a bit miffed. They get upset and they sometimes want you to uh, to use them as the default browser. For 30 day challenge purposes, we wanna make sure Flock is always the default browser. Now, tabs. Tabs are fantastic. Um, they really are important. Let's go through the settings first and then I'll show you. Uh, you can see new pages should be opened in a new tab. I like that because it keeps my windows contained. If it opens up with a new min window, you find yourself with windows all over the screen. And there are ways of dealing with that, but I personally like them coming up with new tabs. Uh, and I ask it to warn me when closing multiple tabs, lifesaver. Uh, warn me when opening multiple tabs, it might slow down flock, which is also very good. Uh, always show the tab bar. I don't have on um, because sometimes it can take up a bit of screen real estate. When I open a link in a new tab, switch to it immediately, which is again, something that you absolutely want to do as well. So that's a very important thing there to do as well. Um, okay, on our next uh, section, you can see uh, there's various security options and so on. You can see here that you can uh, you can uh, block pop-up windows. You can load images automatically. Uh, enable JavaScript. Enable Java. Enable Dig Flyout, which I definitely want to do because there's inbuilt Dig uh, elements inside of Flock, which you'll learn about later. Again, these video series will be showing you. How to, this is setting stuff up. We'll show you the technicalities of how to use it as we go forward during the program. Okay, so there's a little bit of, you know, what do we do first? Chicken, egg, egg, chicken, cart, horse, horse, horse cart. But it'll all come together in the end. Okay, so if you don't understand something, don't worry, it will be covered as we go through. Uh, fonts and colors. I really should play with the uh, default font because uh, you can make it look prettier. Now, feeds, this is big, this is huge, this is very, very important. And this, friends, is a massive, massive time saver. Now, you might recall from last year, we were using blog lines. Well, this year, folks, and for some ways, which um, I've al already told to people in the immediate edge, and you'll see with the 30-day challenge, Google Reader is gonna change your life when you see how to use it properly. Um, at first glance, people look at Google Reader and say, oh, yeah. Not that exciting. I'm going to show you how it's the most exciting thing you've ever seen in your life. It's all in the way that you use it. So what we want to do here is we want to make sure when we're at a new feed, uh, we have Google Chat, which is that one right there. And that'll mean is whenever you uh, want, you come across a blog that you want to keep track of, boom, one button press, and it'll automatically be tracked by Google Reader. And Google Reader allows you to just process so much more information, it's insane. So the girly swats out there may want to indeed rush off and uh, and start getting into uh, Google Reader right now. Uh, but we'll can again, we'll have detailed lessons on setting that up and everything else. Um, searching is a really cool thing here as well, which again is something that a lot of people don't uh, don't do. My default search engine is Google. Uh, you you have options there if you want to, uh, but for me, Google is the one I want. Uh, what's cool here is live results, which are generated while you're searching. And and uh, actually just to, let's just uh, show you that, show you that here. So if I type, uh, you know, oh, come on, Ed Dale, you can see that there's some, Flock keeps track of things that I've had as favorites or as feeds. Um, and you can see I've done an Ed Dale Google search because I just Google myself all the time. Um, there's no Technorati search there, and you can also ask it to search in various areas. And of course, we can have a look at the search preferences. Real time saver, I think. Um, so you can see in live results, you've got a number of options. I like uh, favorites and recently visited. I like Technorati. Uh, Yahoo search for me, eh, not that excited by it, but if it's that's your thing. Uh, in the US, and particularly if you're doing a lot of, you know, Finding stuff, eBay and Craigslist and Amazon is also very handy as well. Uh, including the search elsewhere, I love putting, um, this is very handy because it enables you to just go in and pick which search engine you want to use. So let me just show you a couple of these, 
these preferences. The first thing, which is uh, really, really cool, is let's uh, let's show somebody who I think is fantastic. Now, this is uh, Mich Mich no, Michelle McPherson's. Let's go to her actual blog, because that's what I really want to have a look at. I don't use the feed reader inside of Flock because I use Google Reader. Um, just to just to just to absolutely clarify that now you can see here that uh, we've got tabs you can see here there's the my world tab and I can click on that and then there's the social marketing tab and there's Michelle's uh, stuff right there which is very cool and then you can see here there's this plus sign and if I want to add a new fresh tab there it is and if I type Ed Dale and there we are there's a search there we are, and if I want to choose my blog, we can click on my blog. And give it a second. Do, 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 do. And there's my blog appears as well, which is really, really cool. Now, something that I want you to check out, and I want you to do this. I want you to go to tubbynerd.com, okay? And in your Flock browser, you'll notice that there is, see this little orange icon here, it's like a little radar thing. You'll notice that that is actually indicates that this blog, this site has an RSS feed, which is a cool way of receiving information. Don't freak out about it. There's a whole lesson on all of this stuff coming up, okay? But this is so good because I can literally just do one click, check this out, and if there's multiple, sometimes there are multiple feeds, but this one, if I want to get the underachiever life, and you should go in and do this too. Look at this. I just click add to Google Reader, and it might come up and say I've already got it, but no, it's there we are, boom, done. Already in there, which is just so it's such that is such a time saver. And you may have freaked out about adding too many blogs to read in the past because you never got through them with blog lines or with your other feed readers. I'm gonna show you how you can use Google Reader to just go insane and with the amount of stuff that you can follow um, you it's going to literally save you an hour a day that's what it saved me when we learned this stuff okay so and again if there's all sorts of feeds are out there so if we go to www.30daychallenge.com slash blog here we are give it a sec notice already that that orange little feed reader up there where my mouse is, is there. And again, if we, and you should absolutely do this, you click it on, there's the little pop-up, click 30 day challenge. And then we just click add to Google Reader and away we go. Now you need to have a Google Reader account set up to do this. So if all this Google Reader stuff seems like nonsense to you, just wait till the Google Reader lesson and we'll sign you up to Google. It's going to be very important for those of you who want to skip ahead to have a Google account. You and you want a Gmail account, you want a Google account because there's some amazing new tools. So there we are. This is just scratching the surface of using Flock. In our next video, we're going to show you how to use extensions and the extensions that we're going to use to so we can really uh, pimp up this browser. And then we're going to show you how to use the inbuilt functions of Flock to do some really cool stuff. So stick with us and we'll see you at www.30daychallenge.com. And oh, by the way, last point. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do us a favor and you like the like the content, please give us a five star rating down below there. Really would appreciate that. And of course, any twittering, stumbling, digging, and so on would be really, really gratefully appreciated. Thanks very much, and we'll see you in the next lesson.